Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. We're getting ready for a New Year's party, and I'm going to have some fun with pastry. I'm going to make some perfectly delicious little tongue twisters and get them all ready ahead of time so that I can have fun at the party, too. We're bringing in the New Year today on The French Chef. <laughs> to the French chef. I'm Julia Child. Today we're going to have a New Year's party and I'm going to make some delicious little mouthfuls which are called in French amuse-girl, which means just exactly that. And I'm going to make them out of pastry uh, because it's so much fun and they're easy to do and they're pretty and they always impress people, and I can get them all done ahead of time, and I can freeze them if I want, and I thought you'd be interested to see how we go about it, because it's, uh, I'm going to have these little pastry shells that look like this, and I get them all baked ahead of time, and then I can make all kinds of fillings for them, such as uh, little sweet tarts to have with champagne or tea, or, then I, or I can make other ones to go with drinks. And I can get all the pastry shells done, and I can get all the fillings made, and all I need to do is pop them in the oven if they ought to be hot, or just keep them, uh, keep them out and serve them cold. And I think a lot of us aren't quite used to dealing with pastry except for things like lemon meringue pies. But there's so many things that you, other things that you can do with it. And I think if you begin using pastry, you lose your fear of it and find that if you have a lot of it on hand, there are just so many things you can do. So I'm going to make this out of a homemade dough, or you can make it perfectly well out of a dough mix. And if you want to use a homemade dough of the French type, which would be a butter crust, these are the proportions. For every two cups of all-purpose flour, uh, work in six tablespoons of chilled butter and two tablespoons of Crisco, and then blend half a teaspoon of salt with uh, one-third cup of cold water, and then work that into your paste with your fingers until you have a pliable but somewhat firm dough. Knead it into a ball, wrap it in wax paper, chill it or freeze it, and there you are, all ready to go. And so this one is made out of a French butter crust, the same proportions that I mentioned to you. And we're going to use little, or we can use either little French molds like this, which come individually, and they come in all different shapes. You can get little fluted ones like that, or you can get little boat-shaped ones. I've seen these in quite a few of our department stores, but you never know whether you'll find them or not. And if you don't have any, you can use muffin tins like this. So I'll, we will use both of them, and I'll show, I'll show you how to use each. And so we're going to start out with our flour, with, the, with our dough, which is rather hard. So we're going to beat it up, but first I want to discuss something about rolling pins. Now this is a French rolling pin, which is just a long, hard wood pin, and it's very nice. You roll it with your hands. And then we have here a great pastry chef's pin. This is an American-made one, and it only costs about $5 in a pastry shop, and it all is on roller bearings, and it's so heavy that it does the work for you. You just it's a, it's a little bit big for this table today, so I'm going to use the French one. Now, this one is the kind that you usually see. I found this in my favorite hardware store, and I've seen it in department stores. And look at it. Look at the two of them together. I mean, this is just ridiculous. This is, this is a toy. It's not a tool, and it just nobody ought to use it. I'm going to throw it away. I just thought you ought to see it, because nobody should give anybody that kind of a pins. You can't do anything with it. So, this is hard, so we beat it up. 
And you can be very rough with pastry. We've done pastry on in our quiche program, which you might have seen. And so I'm not going to go into a great deal about it, except just rolling it out. And some people like to roll on a pastry cloth. They don't do that in France, so I've never done it. And some people like to roll it between pieces of wax paper. You can do it any way you want, as long as it rolls out nicely. I'm using a piece of marble, which is very nice to use. This is a nice black marble, and you just look up in your yellow pages under marble and call them up and ask them what they have. And very often you can get an old second-hand bureau prop, and that works out very nicely. Now, when you're rolling, be sure that you keep lifting your pastry and flowering underneath, because the main thing is you don't want the pastry to stick. And that's one of the nice things about marble. It's cold and it doesn't stick very much. And then roll it out to about a sixteenth of an inch, and then pick a cutter that will be about the shape of the mold you're going to use. This one is seats a little bit bigger than that, so a little bit bigger than my mold, so this is the one I'll use. And then just cut it all out like that. I Really, I should have found out how many cups of flour made how many tarts, but I don't seem to work that way. I just make a whole lot of pastry and then roll it up and freeze it if I'm not going to use it. Now there we have these all cut out, and so then you want to butter the bottom of your mold so that you can be sure that you can unmold the pastry. And I'm going to put these all on the bottoms of the molds. I'll put it on there too. And I don't, you can put them either on the bottom or on the inside. I think the bottom is a rather good way to do it because then we're going to put another mold on top and that holds the pastry in place as it cooks. But after you put it on, be sure to prick it with a fork. And that will also keep the pastry from rising up too much as it cooks. And for little pastry shells like this, do not use a pastry recipe that has egg in it because the egg puffs up the pastry and you want it to lie perfectly flat. Then butter the inside of that mold and then just put it on top and that will hold it. And now we'll do with the muffin tin. And when you do the muffin tins, get twin tins and then you can have exactly the same effect. And then just lay your pastry on. And with, see, you're pressing it down a little bit with your fingers. And you can make, of course, with the muffin tins, you can make it just as deep as you want. I want them not to be too deep, because I don't want to use too much filling. Besides, that would make rather more than a little mouthful. And if you want to make a large, if you want to make a large pie shell, you could use exactly the same system. Then once you have it on, remember always to prick it all around with your fork. You'll find, I think, if you get used to making your own homemade pastry, it tastes so much better than, well, it tastes extremely good because it's made out of fresh ingredients and butter. And a lot of people just think of a pastry shell as just a case to hold something, and what it should be absolutely delicious in itself. So that, I mean, if you ate, ate the pastry with nothing in it at all, it would be lovely to eat. And then put your other, put the second, your twin mold in, and don't push down too far, just sort of set it on and push it down a little bit, and that will hold it. So that's ready to bake. And then I'll fill a few more of these little tartlet shells. Now, if you fill it on the inside, you butter the inside and just press it in like that. And then make your little fork marks. And then you have to fill it with, with something, either paper and beans or another little mold. And now the reason we're baking these all ahead of time is that we don't want a soggy pastry crust. And if you just bake it for about five minutes in a 450 oven, just until it holds together, 
then the pastry's just cooked enough on the bottom so that it's not going to be soggy when you fill it. And I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. It's awfully useful having a timer so then you, then you don't get mixed up. And now, if you have, if you've made, say, your shells and you have as many as you want, you have leftover dough, here are, here's something that you can do with it. Just to give you an idea of how useful it is to have dough on hand, just roll it out. And you will find, of course, you can roll it out and then make more pastry shells. But if you find that you've rolled it out and gathered it together and rolled it out again, if you're using all-purpose flour, you'll find that after you've done that about twice, the gluten in the flour, that's the technical term, begins to get all like rubber and you try to roll it out and it's become tough and you can't. So what you have to do as soon as it becomes tough is to roll it up and let it rest for two hours and then it will relax. Now here we've got it rolled out and we're going to make some cheese straws. So here's some grated Swiss cheese. Now again, as in with so many of our recipes, proportions don't make any difference. You just sort of once you've gotten the general principle, you just make up what you like. And now I'm rolling it up from the bottom there. And then I'm going to roll it out again. And you may find also, again, if I'm using this flour, this has rested overnight, so this is fairly well relaxed. And if you happen to find pastry flour, it's really much the best thing to work with. Now I'll put in a little more cheese. I'll just put it on the half that time and then roll it up. See, we're making layers of cheese and then we cut it into rectangles. There. And now I have a little, one of these little ravioli wheels. See, it has little, little teeth in it and it just rolls around like that. And it's very useful not only for ravioli, but for making little, little lines. So that makes it look a little dressy. There. And then, you even it off a little bit, and then just cut it into rectangles. See how useful those wheels are? Because just cutting it with a knife takes a lot more time. And now, we'll put it on a buttered tin. You always lightly, lightly butter any tin that you're going to use so that things don't stick to it. And then we just lay them on. And these are going to swell a little bit as, as they cook. If these don't have time to cook, I've got some that are already made so that you'll see. And now we have to put on a professional glaze. And don't let anyone kid you that milk or something like that is going to give the proper glaze that sort of a lovely gold and crackly finish. You've got to use whole egg. This is one whole egg beaten with half a teaspoon of water. And this is the kind of glaze that professional, good professional pastry men use. And it's the one that gives the proper finish to things. Because after all, I think when you make things, you want them to look as professional as possible. That's what I always think when I try to do dressmaking. It just looks too unprofessional, and I'm embarrassed about it. Now, after you've got your glaze on, you can, if you're going to serve them plain, just make some little light fork marks like that. Or <clears throat> after you've gotten your glaze on and you want a little more, uh, little more cheese on, just put on a little grated Swiss cheese. And it doesn't <coughs> make any difference if the cheese drips on the pastry plaque because you can just scrape that off. There, now we can have, I can show you something else that we can do. And these are going to be little pastry turnovers. Let's roll it out again. You can use the same cheese dough or perfectly plain dough. And then cut it out. And we'll then put any kind of a filling that you would like. I've got, some, as long as we're in the cheese world, we'll put some, I'll put a little bit of diced cheese there. Or you could put something with, I'll 
with a little filling or some sausage meat, and then you have to wet the edge of it. There goes my bell. And then you would do that, you would cover that with your cheese and egg in the same way as you do, did with our little cheese straws. But be sure on this that you poke it very carefully with your finger and then also make some little fork marks. Now, I don't want to, I can wait for just a, a minute for my oven, but be sure when, when your bell goes off that you're practically right there because it's an awful thing if you go into all this trouble and then you let them burn up. I've done that once in a while and it's, it's enraging. Now, we're going to see these should be just done. Now our little cheese sticks would go into a 425 oven and they would bake for about 10 to 12 minutes until they were nicely risen. And now Now, you see, those are just baked five minutes, and this is what call, is called baked a blanc, or just white baked. And they should just hold their shape. And this, these are fairly soft now, and you could let them cool for a minute or two on the, on the mold, but you should unmold them onto a rack so that air will circulate around them and crisp them up. I've noticed, and haven't you, so many people, Americans, when they get a piece of pie, they never eat the bottom pie crust because it's soggy. And if you, if you did this, always bake the pie crust first, you wouldn't have a soggy, soggy crust. You see the little, these look, they just hold their shape and they look very nice. And these you can bake way ahead of time and you can freeze them if you'd like and they will keep, oh, several days in, in an airtight tin. I have had the terrible trouble once in a while, though, if they've been rolled too thin and baked too much, that they, <coughs> that they will split apart. Now we're going to do some fillings. We'll do the appetizer fillings this time. And then we'll do some sweet fillings afterwards. Now, these are very easy to do, too. And all you do is make a nice cream sauce. We've done so many white sauces on this program. This is just a regular white bechamel sauce. And I flavored it up with a little, with some shallots and a little tiny bit of garlic and a little tiny bit of vermouth. And you can make it with anything you any kind of flavoring you like, and then I put in a little bit of cheese. And it's a fairly thick consistency, you see. And then we have various fillings that we can use. I've got some more cheese, so we'll start out with that. And this is diced cheese. And it's better to have it diced because it melts a little more slowly and doesn't become stringy. And then you just and then we're going to put a little bit of this egg glaze in because we want the sauce to puff. And I've got about a cup there. So I'll put in half of an egg and beat it up. See, this is very much like a quiche mixture, except it's made with a flour-thickened sauce so that it doesn't collapse as quickly. And then we want just to put in just enough sauce to enrobe our cheese. This is just to give it a little, a little, a sort of a moisture. And these are the little pastry shells we made in the muffin tins. And then I'll make one from the little French ones. You don't want to put too much in because the, because the egg makes it puff up. And if you put too much in it, it'll all puff over and spill over into the stove. Now here's a little bit of chopped chutney. That's a nice idea. So that gives you a sort of, uh, I guess you might, a, a far eastern taste to it. And it's, it's very nice with cheese. Now, with none of these 
you need any recipe either. You just sort of make it up. Just remember that a little egg is a puff, and you want a well-flavored sauce. Now, this, you, this could be chopped ham, actually. What this is is, is chopped canned frankfurters, which are a rather sad thing by themselves. But if you put in a nicely flavored sauce, it turns out to be very good indeed. I just happen to have these, and I think that it's a, the kind of thing that you can do, just making something lovely out of whatever old things you have in the cupboard. And that is done in exactly the same way. Oh, I'm a little messy on that. And then we'll put a little bit of cheese on that, just to make it. And that will give it a little browning when it's in the oven. <coughs> and let's see what else we have. I have here a little bit of this ham mix. And if you want to be a little faster in the way you do things, you can take this is just a canned ham, sort of a mashed Virginia ham paste. You can just put a little bit in the shell and then cover it with your all-purpose sauce. As long as you have a good tasting sauce, your little hors d'oeuvres are, are going to taste very well. And then cover that also with a little bit of cheese. Now you see that's very easy indeed. You can use canned clams, you can use uh, lobster or uh, chicken livers or tuna fish, sardines, just really anything that you have in your cupboard. It's a very good idea to have quite a few things in your cupboard just in case you run into anything like this. And with these, these will be cooked in a 375 degree oven for about 10 to 15 minutes until they have puffed up just a little bit and the top is browned nicely. And then when they're and then when they're ready, you take them out of the oven. And if you want, you can serve them hot. <coughs> and when they're just taken out of the oven, they remain very sort of puffed. And as they cool, they sink down a little bit. But you can serve them either hot or cold. It doesn't make any difference. And now we're going to do some sweet tarts. And also, with these, um, with these tarts, you can freeze them when they're already baked. That's one of the great things about them. Now, this is going to be an oven tart called a tarte de Nancy. And I think that means Nancy's tart. And she must have been a lovely person to have such a delicious tart named after her. This is four tablespoons of softened butter. And we have a quarter of a cup of sugar. And we have half an egg. Now, I still have half an egg left over from this glazing in the other sauce. We put the half egg in there. And then we have a third of a cup of pulverized almonds. That's just blanched almonds pulverized in the blender. And then we're going to have a little bit of orange liqueur. <coughs> you don't have to put liqueur in if you don't want to. I'm putting in about a tablespoon. And then we have a little bit of almond extract. And one cap full is about a quarter of a cup. And I'm going to have a little less than that. You always have to put in some almond extract if you're using almonds to get the almond taste. And then all you do is just mix that up. And that's, that's it. And then for the baking of them, you have our same little tart shells. And if you're going to make something like these almond tarts, which are so so delicate and good, you really should use a homemade butter crust. And you could put a little bit of sugar in it. And you paint the shell with uh, apricot jam, and that gives an extra taste. And then you put in just a little bit of it, just about, well, it's just about a teaspoon. And then you put that in a 375 five degree oven until it's puffed and brown. And now I'm going to take out some ready cooked tarts so you'll see what they look like. You can see how easy that tart de Nancy, that almond tart is. And my, it's good. 
Now, here we are, and we have here, this is our cheese and chutney. Of course, they all look something alike. And what you can do, you have your almond. There's your almond tart there. And the thing to do is sprinkle that with a little bit of powdered sugar when it's done, and then you can tell which is which. And there are our cheese straws. You see that has puffed and browned very nicely. And here is our little, uh, I guess that was our fake ham, the one that was made out of the, out of the canned sausage. But it's surprisingly good. And there's our cheese and chutney. And these are, that, that's the little turnover. And with the turnovers, it's very nice. You can use this same kind of a sauce that we used in our cheese tarts. But um, don't put any egg in it, because you don't want the inside of it to puff. And just a very thick sauce, and then just enrobe whatever you, you have. It could be, uh, well, it could be ham, or it could be sautéed chicken livers, or mushrooms. And as you see, you can just really sort of make up your own recipe, and it's going to turn out beautifully. And now let's see how our New Year's table looks. Here we are all set up for the party. We have all kinds of things, including our almond tarts and our cheese straws and our turnovers. And there are our, our ham or sausage and cheese things. And here is our New Year's eggnog. So we're really absolutely all ready for everything. And as you, as you can see, once you can make the pastry, you can just make up anything that you like. And there's something, I don't know, I think they, I think they look awfully nice, and people think that you're, you're terribly smart unless they happen to know how to do them themselves. But, and I think the wonderful thing is about being able to freeze them. So when I ever make them, I always make an awful lot of them, because as long as you're going to sort of get all covered with flour, you might as well go with a whole hog. And then I bake them and put them in the freezer, and then just before we're ready to go, I just stick them in the oven just to heat through, and there they are. And if you have unexpected people drop in and you want to put on a little bit of the dog, there you are. And it also makes such a festive look, I think, on the table. And I, these little almond tarts with their little bit of um, powdered sugar on them go awfully well with New Year's punch or with champagne or with tea or coffee. And then all of your other ones go with drinks, and you can use them as appetizers or if people are coming in late in the evening, it's fine. So now we're all ready for our New Year's party. And so am I. Happy New Year!